Chapter 81 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I only lent Jean to you translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation After taking a shower and having dinner, George planned to go back. Teddy suddenly went forward respectfully. Fourth Master, Sean Reed from the Reed Group has brought his son, Adam Reed, to look for you. He's waiting outside the door. Edward took a look at George. George was a little baffled. Edward said indifferently. Let them come in. Understood. Teddy turned around and left. He brought a few people in later. As soon as they entered, George recognized the boy. Although the boy was badly bruised, George recognized that he was the one who had taken the lead in beating him today. Sean hurriedly tugged at his son and said apologetically, Fourth Master, my son has offended you today. I brought him here to let you deal with him. He hasn't offended me. Edward's voice was neither slow nor hurried as he glanced at Adam. The moment Adam met Fourth Master Swan's gaze, he was so frightened that he was about to cry again. Initially, he had gone back to complain about his grievances. He did not expect that when he said that he had offended Edward Swan, he was almost beaten to death by his dad. Now, he was asked to apologize again. He had originally refused, but he was beaten up again. Yes, yes, yes. He must have offended little Master San. I'll ask him to apologize to him in person, Sean said quickly. That's not it too, Edward said coldly. Ha! Huh. Sean was a little confused. While his son said that he had beaten up a boy named George, he was certain that it was not George. The only person that Fourth Master Swan could stand up for was Quinton, his nephew. George, Edward called him calmly. George looked at Edward. Edward asked, Do you forgive him? George turned his head and looked at Adam. Adam had been beaten up terribly. Sean was also a smart person in the business world. He quickly realized that his son had indeed offended this little boy named George. At this moment, Sean did not have time to think about why Fourth Master Swan would protect an unknown little boy. He quickly grabbed his son and said, Hurry up and apologize. Adam was pulled in front of George by his dad, who was very embarrassed. He sobbed and said to George, I'm sorry, George. George just looked at him and did not answer. Sean quickly tried to fawn over him and said, George, it's Adam's fault for hitting you today. I've gone back and beat him up. Will you forgive him? No, George uttered clearly. Sean looked embarrassed. Teddy was also a little surprised. He had always thought that George was the kind of boy who was boring and easy to compromise with. George was the kind that was easy to bully. George was cornered this afternoon and did not resist or make a fuss. He seemed to be the kind of boy who would tolerate it and was very introverted. Edward, who was at the side, raised the corner of his mouth. Then, how will you forgive him? Sean asked awkwardly. My mom said that something wrong that's done is done. It doesn't need to be forgiven, George said, either you continue to be wrong, or you correct yourself. The price of forgiveness is too light. It's meaningless and a waste of time. Sean was stunned. George's words rendered him speechless. Instantly, he felt a little awkward. Sean asked after a long while, then how would you like him to correct himself? Correct the way he was wrong, George said seriously. Sean nodded. Yes, yes, yes. Then I promise that Adam will never bully you again. If he bullies you again, I'll break his legs. George did not say anything else. Fourth Master Swan spoke, George said that he doesn't need to be forgiven because the price of forgiveness is too light. The underlying meaning is that you have to pay the price for doing wrong. His indifferent words made Sean's hair stand on end. Sean quickly said respectfully, Fourth Master, please instruct me. I'll do what I can. Adam, right. Yes, Adam answered with tears in his eyes. You're a tyrant at school. Edward raised his eyebrow. Wah! 
Adam was scared to tears. He had never been beaten up like that by his father since he was young. Everyone in the family was in a state of panic because he had offended Edward. He also knew that this matter seemed to be very serious. From now on, you'll be George's little brother. Edward was straightforward. Adam looked at Edward in disbelief. L.C., do you have any objections? He dares not, he dares not, Sean quickly said, from now on, in school, George will be Adam's big brother. Don't worry. In the future, he won't bully George anymore. He'll also protect George and listen to all his arrangements. Edward nodded. All right, bring your son back. Fourth master, I'm really sorry to disturb you. I'll surely discipline my child well in the future, Sean quickly promised. Edward did not reply, Sean tactfully took his son and left. After leaving, Edward also took George and sent him back to the Lawrence family's manor. It was very quiet in the car. George wanted to speak a few times, but he kept his mouth shut. If you have something to say, just say it. We'll be at your house soon, Edward suddenly said. George bit his lip and seemed to have mustered up his courage. Why did you help me? Edward turned to look at George. Are you touched? No, George refused flatly. Edward smiled but did not answer. Actually, I don't like you. George was very serious. You've said it before. Edward was very indifferent. But if... George bit his lip. If you promise not to snatch my mom away from me, I can barely like you. Edward smiled again. He said, that won't do. George's face was filled with annoyance. Edward said, besides, I'm not the one who wants to snatch your mom away. I'm the one who lent her to you temporarily. You'll have to return what you borrowed sooner or later. That's not true. The car stopped at the front door of the Lawrence family's house. Fourth Master Swan did not get out of the car. George was sent back by Teddy. Jean took a look at George and said to Teddy, Go back and tell your master that the next time he gets sick again, I'll really send him to the hospital. Teddy replied respectfully, Yes, I'll definitely pass on the message. Jean watched Teddy leave and turned her head to look at George. George's eyes flickered as he felt that he had made a mistake. He followed Jean back to the room. There were many clothes that Fourth Master Swan had bought for him. Fourth Master Swan had gotten the shopping mall to send them back in advance, filling up George's room. Mom. George called out to her. Jean took a deep breath. Forget it, sleep early. This was not her son's fault. She did not have to let her son take the blame for someone else's mistakes. Okay. George obediently went to the bathroom to wash up. Lying on the bed, George could not fall asleep. Jean could not fall asleep either. On one hand, she was angered by Fourth Master Swan. On the other hand, she was thinking about work tomorrow. Mom, George said. Hmm, does everyone change when they grow up? George asked. Jean was a little silent. She did not expect him to ask such a deep question all of a sudden. Just as she was thinking of a more philosophical and understandable answer, George said again, Fourth Master Swans looks very strange. Jean frowned. He gave me a shower. I saw it. George described it very clearly. Dot. So. What should I say? Chapter 82 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Need a helper translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation The next day, Jean took George to have breakfast. At the breakfast table, Alexander, Joshua, and Jennifer were all there. Jennifer had been taking good care of Alexander. In the Lawrences, Alexander enjoyed the treatment of a king. It was not strange that Alexander liked Jennifer so much. Jennifer's methods of coaxing a man were still first dot class. Jean sat over, and the servants brought breakfast. She said casually, Little mother, 
the driver didn't pick George up from school yesterday. Did you know? Jennifer looked a little surprised. How can that be? Isn't George home? Jean sneered. George was just sent back last night. I'm afraid you're taking George too seriously. I was too busy yesterday. I had a friend who had something to do in the afternoon, so I went out. I really didn't know, Jennifer explained, looking very sincere. The driver didn't tell you. Jean asked. No, really, Jennifer kept explaining. She just looked like she did not know anything. Then it's the responsibility of the driver, Jean said indifferently. I'll punish him properly later. How are you going to punish him, little mother? Jean asked. There should be a lesson. His salary will be deducted. I'm afraid you're too biased, Jean said sarcastically, if George was taken away by bad guys yesterday, who would bear the responsibility? Jennifer was a little embarrassed. Such a driver has to be fired, Jean said straightforwardly. Jennifer was momentarily speechless. The driver was a distant relative of hers. Dad, what do you think? Jean did not seek Jennifer's opinion at this moment and turned to Alexander. Alexander put down his cutleries and wiped his mouth. You don't have to report to me if you're just firing a servant. Firing the driver is a small matter, but if he's fired, who will send and pick up George? Jennifer played dumb. Can't you hire another one? Jean raised her eyebrow. It takes time. During this period, I'll have to trouble you then, little mother, Jean said very naturally. Jennifer could not find the words to reject her at this moment. If she rejected, it would be obvious that she was targeting Jean, or that she did not care about George. The two crimes were disadvantageous to her. Jennifer smiled, trying to swallow her anger. She said, I have nothing to do at home anyway. I'll send him and pick him up. Thank you, little mother. Jean smiled very nicely. Jennifer suppressed her anger. Jean was really getting more and more unreasonable. Jean's motive was obviously not just to deliberately anger Jennifer. More importantly, Jennifer personally picking up George would ensure his safety. Even if Jennifer was putting on a show, she would not let anything happen to George. If anything happened to George, she would be the first to be implicated. After the incident of George being kidnapped by Fourth Master Swan, Jean suddenly felt that she needed a helper. After breakfast, Jean drove to the company by herself. Alexander still brought Joshua to the company. At 10 o'clock a.m., Jean had the meeting on time. Everyone reported on the work that was arranged yesterday. Jean listened attentively. After the meeting ended, she assigned a bunch of tasks. Jean also returned to her office. She sat down and picked up the phone to make a call. The call was quickly picked up. Are you used to your work? Is it important? Jean raised her eyebrow. Can you not ignore my concern every time? Because you're always talking nonsense. Dot. The person was a little unhappy. Why are you looking for me? I need a helper, Jean said straightforwardly. Kingsley was stunned for a moment. You can't handle it. It's not me, it's George. Jean told him about how George had been kidnapped by Fourth Master Swan yesterday. Kingsley agreed immediately. I'll arrange it for you right away. Okay. Jean nodded. Do you want to send George back instead? Kingsley suggested. Jean said, he has to follow me. Okay. Kingsley compromised. It was possible to discuss anything with Jean, but with George, there was no room for discussion. Jean hung up the phone. She just did not want George to feel that she had abandoned him. Jean was deeply hurt by her family. She knew what it felt like, and she would not let George experience it. Her eyes turned slightly, and she focused on her work. At this moment, 
she was getting her team members to write a draft proposal on how to obtain the MUK cooperation rights, and she was already writing a direction for the Lawrence Enterprise's transformation after working with MUK. If she wanted to save the enterprise, she could only start from the root. Of course, she was not doing it to help the Lawrences. She was only doing it for revenge. A week of busy and routine work passed just like that. MUK announced that they would find a partner to open up the e.commerce market in Harkin. There were a lot of active companies at the moment, and many of them had started negotiations as soon as they received the news. Jean did not seem particularly active. Due to Jean's attitude, Alexander even called her to his office and scolded her. At this moment, in Joshua's office. Joshua was gloating over Jean's misfortune as he made a call. I think Jean might not be that great. Eden frowned slightly. What did you discover? Right now, the MUK group has started discussing the collaboration with some enterprises, but Jean is still unmoved. Today, she was even scolded by my dad. She probably feels that she doesn't have the ability to negotiate this collaboration. We can't let our guard down, Eden reminded, who knows what Jean is going to do. Since she promised to take down the MUK cooperation right in front of the board of directors, she definitely has her abilities. She wouldn't be so stupid as to slap her face like this. What you mean is that she's only pretending now and trying to create a smokescreen. It's very likely, Eden said, oh right, have you bribed the person I told you to? It's done. Joshua's smile was especially sinister. Money can make the devil move. I only gave some money, and the other party couldn't resist the temptation. Very good. Eden nodded. Have him report to you at any time about the situation of Jean's project. Remember, you must be careful not to let Jean find out. Otherwise, not only will you not be able to monitor her in the future, but you'll also be caught by her and won't be able to stay out. Don't worry, I know what to do. Call me if there are any updates. Okay. Joshua hung up the phone. The corners of his mouth curled up into a cold smile. At this point, Jean came out of Alexander's office and held an emergency meeting. Jean said, Tomorrow, I need a complete MUK cooperation plan. The morning after tomorrow, I'll meet with the MUK partner to discuss the cooperation. A few areas need to be revised for the proposal that you gave me before. I hope that everyone will work overtime tonight to complete it. Understood. After the meeting, Jean returned to her office and was also working overtime to finish the proposal. Jean knew very well that there were many people who did not want her to succeed in the cooperation. She wanted to ensure that nothing went wrong. She worked all the way until 9 o'clock p.m. Jean saved her own proposal. She stretched and stood up from her office chair, intending to get off work. Her phone rang. To be honest, she was afraid to receive a call from Monica at such a late hour. She hesitated for a moment before picking up. Monica. Hurry and come to King.T. Monica sounded like she was in a hurry. What's wrong? Something big has happened. Hurry and come. Dot. Does Monica go crazy every once in a while? Chapter 83 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Rivals in Love Meet Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Jean wanted to hang up the phone right away. Judging from Monica's tone, she seemed to be in good spirits, so nothing big had happened. At this moment, another man's voice came from the phone. He said, Jeannie, it's Finn. Jean frowned. Under normal circumstances, Monica and Finn would not go to the nightclub together. Unless. It was to accompany Fourth Master Swan. Jean did not need to think to know that Monica must be trying to set her up with Fourth Master Swan. Just as she was about to reject, Finn said, Today is my birthday, and there aren't many people. If it's possible, can you come over? Jean swallowed the words that were on the tip of her tongue. Although she was not very familiar with Finn, it seemed that because of Monica, 
they could still be considered friends. Nonetheless, they were not casual friends, so it was difficult to reject him. Come over. You won't have to stay for long, Finn said again. Jean nodded. Okay. Then we'll wait for you. Jean hung up the phone. She took a deep breath and drove to the nightclub. Jean pushed open the door. It was rare for the room to be so bright, so the moment she walked in, she saw everyone in the room. It was truly an unexpected combination. Other than Finn and Monica, it was not surprising that Fourth Master Swan and Knox were also present. The key was, why were Eden and Michael here? If they were also here, so be it. They were still related to the people here, after all. What Jean did not expect was that Melody was also here. At that moment, she finally understood what Monica meant by, something big. Monica was probably worried that Fourth Master Swan and Melody would pair up. Well, Jean had almost forgotten about Melody. She smiled calmly and said to Finn, Sorry, I just finished working overtime, so I'm late. Finn smiled nonchalantly. Sit here. Jean was brought to a sofa in the private room by Finn and sat down. Monica was next to her, and Fourth Master Swan and Knox were not far from her. Michael, Melody, and Eden were sitting on the other side. Actually, it could be seen from the seats that the three of them were together. Eden had grown up with Melody. They did not have much interaction when they were young, so the relationship between them was probably due to Michael. The Rosses were a family of officials. They had a high position and power, so it seemed to be a matter of course that they had a good relationship with the royal family of Harkin. While Jean was secretly sorting out some of her relationships, Monica quietly whispered in her ear, It's Finn's birthday. Knox, who loves parties, insisted on finding an excuse to come to the nightclub, so we came. I know you've been busy recently and didn't think of disturbing you. Who knew, when we were drinking, Melody came and immediately flirted with Fourth Master Swan. One look and it was obvious that she wanted to seduce Fourth Master. Fourth Master can't belong to anyone. He has to be yours. Jean was speechless. Who said it had to be that way? Jean asked Monica, are Melody and Michael on good terms? They seem to have grown up together, similar to you, me, and Eden, Monica said. As expected. I'll go and tell Michael not to pair them up wrongly. Monica left after saying that. Jean watched Monica walk toward Michael and called Michael out. The moment she left, Finn, who was drinking with Fourth Master Swan and Knox, glanced over. Jean was speechless toward Monica sometimes. At this moment, a woman suddenly appeared in front of her. Jean's eyes moved slightly as she looked at Melody. Melody only gave Jean a threatening look. She turned around and walked toward Fourth Master Swan. She said, Edward, I have something to say to you in private. Edward looked at Melody and turned his head slightly to look at Jean. He put down his elegant leg and stood up. Melody seemed to be a little arrogant as she turned around and walked in front. Edward followed behind her. Jean watched them leave after the other. It was rumored that Fourth Master Swan, who was cold and aloof to strangers, seemed to be a little gentler when he treated the Princess of Harkin. Four people suddenly walked out of the private room. The room seemed emptier. Knox and Finn were drinking casually and seemed to be at ease. Dot Jean did not drink. It was awkward in such an environment. On top of the awkwardness, Eden suddenly walked over and sat next to her. Didn't I say that the Sanders' third princess has taken a liking to my fourth uncle? Eden held up his wine glass and drank by himself, his tone filled with sarcasm. So. Jean smiled indifferently. I'm reminding you to know your limits. You don't have to worry about my matters. Jean, don't do it the hard way. I've tolerated you for a long time. Eden was suddenly very angry. He was easily angered by Jean. Ever since Jean had returned, she seemed to have never regarded him as anything. It was enough to want to attract his attention. 
he could not stand it any more. This woman was so disdainful toward him. If Jean had not caused such a huge ruckus back then, he could still be together with her. It was only because she took herself too seriously that he chose Jasmine. He wanted to teach Jean a lesson and let her understand that just because he liked her, it did not mean that she could do whatever she wanted. Now that Jean had returned, Eden also wanted to see her regret it. He wanted her to beg him to help her and to be together with her. He did not want her to go against him all the time. Eden had originally planned to make Jean his lover after returning this time. As long as she was obedient enough, he would treat her well. Jean did not care about Eden's anger at all. She suddenly stood up from the sofa. Eden pulled her back. Knox was drinking wine. Looking at Eden's actions, his expression changed slightly. Young Master Swan, don't be touchy. Eden gritted his teeth and let go of Jean. He knew that Knox had a good relationship with his fourth uncle. Knox was originally just a helper in his family. To put it bluntly, he was the son of a servant. Due to Eden's fourth uncle's protection, Knox could now do whatever he wanted in the swans. Jean moved her wrist and even used a napkin to wipe it. It was as if she was wiping something dirty. At this moment, Eden really wanted to kill Jean. What right does she have to despise me? She's a second-hand goods. How can she be so self-righteous? What's wrong with fourth uncle that he would fall for her? Is it just her beauty or her skills in bed? Jean completely ignored Eden's emotions. She turned around and walked out of the private room. Knox had a smile on his face. He had a feeling that a good show was about to happen. Jean was indeed going to look for fourth master Swan. After all, she had reached an agreement with him. She walked to the end of the corridor and walked to a back garden. In the back garden, two figures stood under the moonlight. It was rare that the moonlight was bright tonight. Why won't you accept me? What exactly is wrong with me? Melody's voice was a little agitated as if she was crying. Fourth Master Swan did not reply. Jean walked over and took the initiative to hold Fourth Master Swan's arm intimately. She smiled at Melody and said, that's because first come, first served. Chapter 84 You are listening at NovelFull.audio at least they were in love translator. Endless fantasy translation editor. Endless fantasy translation, that's because first come, first served. Jean held on to Edward's arm and smiled sweetly. To Melody, she was deliberately showing off. After all, Melody was born with a noble status and had a sense of superiority from a young age. How could she endure such grievances? Initially, she was feeling bad about being rejected by Edward. Now, she suffered a blow by Jean, who did not have any status. The anger that Melody had suppressed burst out in an instant. Her voice was very loud. First come, first served. Do you know that I've liked Edward for many years? When I was ten years old, I followed my father to the Swans. When I saw him for the first time, I already liked him. Ms. Sanders, a one-dot-sided liking isn't love. It is just an unrequited love. As Jean said that, she raised her head and smiled at Edward. Isn't that right? Edward looked at Jean in the same way. Jean's intentions were very clear. If she offended the Sanders, she would at least have to drag someone down with her. The corners of Edward's mouth curled up slightly. He said in an attractive voice, Yes. Jean's smile was very bright. Melody watched the interaction between them just like that. She had never seen Edward pamper anyone so much. She even felt that his gaze was as gentle as water. She had always thought that Edward was not good with words and did not speak or smile. He was a serious and cold person to anyone. Melody bit her lip tightly and looked at them fiercely. Fourth master, I'm so sleepy. I want to go back and sleep, Jean said coquettishly. I'll send you back. Edward took Jean and left immediately. 
he did not even look at Melody. Melody looked at their intimate interaction, and her body was trembling. She shouted, Who exactly is Jean that you want to like her? Your nephew doesn't even want her anymore, and yet you still want to pick up that abandoned shoe. Don't you think that you're ridiculous? Jean and Edward stopped in their tracks at the same time. Edward turned his head, and his gaze was very cold. Melody saw his gaze, and her heart froze. She could not help but shiver. Melody straightened her back and used her identity to maintain her arrogance. Miss Sanders, I know clearly what kind of woman Jean is. But you. You're worse than a broken shoe. Edward. Melody screamed in anger. Edward brought Jean along and left without caring about her emotions. Jean felt her scalp tingle when she heard the screams from the person behind her. It was not that she sympathized with her. She was just guessing that she had gained another enemy, one that was not to be trifled with. Jean and Edward walked into the nightclub. She let go of Edward's arm very naturally. It was enough for her to act to this extent. Edward's expression changed slightly. Jean did not mind. She walked to the private room and was about to push the door open. Aren't you sleepy? Edward asked her. Jean stopped pushing the door open. I'll send you back first. I drove. I can go back by myself. If it was possible, she would leave first. I'll send you. Edward's tone was firm. It's Finn's birthday today. He has a birthday every year. Dot. Let's go. Edward suddenly reached out and grabbed Jean's hand. He wrapped her hand completely in his palm. It seemed very natural. Jean had always felt that fourth master swan was cold. At this moment, the temperature in his palm made her heart palpitate. Fourth master swan left with Jean. Monica was still talking to Michael about the two of them. She was filled with righteous indignation and told him not to randomly match a couple. Fourth Master Swan and Jean were a match made in heaven, and even the Sanders princess could not interfere. Michael just looked at Monica like that. Monica was not pretentious, hypocritical, or concealing. She was very simple. Although she did not look like a rich young lady, he was crazily in love with her. He watched her speak excitedly as her rosy lips opened and closed. HNG, Monica was stunned. Michael suddenly kissed her. He suddenly kissed her hard. Monica stared at Michael in front of her with wide eyes. She saw him being in deep affection. Monica vaguely remembered when they were in love. She vaguely remembered how her heart was moved at that time. Dazed, she let Michael deeply kiss her. After a long time, Michael let go of her. Looking at her stunned look, he gently caressed her lips with his fingers. He said in a hoarse voice, Monica, let's start again. Monica seemed to come back to her senses at this moment. She came back to her senses and pushed Michael away. Monica took a deep breath. I'm married. I know that you and Finn are in a marriage of convenience. Michael looked at her affectionately. So get a divorce. Let's get married. Monica looked at Michael. Michael said, enunciating each word, let's get married. Why did we break up back then? Monica asked him sarcastically. I admit that I was too weak back then and was forced to leave by my parents. Now that I'm back, I'll never compromise again. So you mean that if your parents don't agree with us being together, you'll break up with them? I can, Michael promised. But I don't want it, Monica refused. Michael's expression changed slightly. There's nothing to look forward to in a marriage that isn't blessed, Monica said, I was born into a very warm family. I know how important the warmth of a family is. Let's not talk about love being paramount. Once love violates family love, I don't think love will become great. It'll only become selfish. Michael looked at Monica. Monica looked carefree and heartless. In fact, she had her principles. She also had things that she insisted on, 
things that were not to be violated. Michael, that's it. Monica turned around. She did not want to drag things out any longer. Monica did not want to go back and experience the feeling of being forced to break up again. If I can get my parents' approval and they accept you, will you marry me? Michael suddenly asked her loudly. Monica stopped in her tracks. Monica. Michael went forward and hugged her in his arms. She resisted. Michael hugged her even tighter as if he was afraid of losing her. Give me some time. I'll deal with my family's matters. Monica's heart was beating slightly. Give me some time. I'll definitely take care of it. How long? Monica was a little sarcastic. One year, two years, three years, five years. Three months. Michael was firm. Monica's heart moved. If I don't take care of my family's matters within three months, I won't bother you anymore. If I do, you'll marry me. Michael buried his head in Monica's neck. Okay. His tone was pleading. In fact, Michael was born noble, and he was superior to everyone else. Only to her, he was always very careful and pampered her. Monica was probably moved like that in the past. At this moment. It seemed that she could not refuse him. Monica admitted that she was actually very happy during that period with Michael. She admitted that during that period, she forgot Finn very quickly. Okay. Monica agreed. At least with Michael, they were in love. As for Finn, it was just a one-dot-sided love. Chapter 85 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Scheme Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation at King.T Nightclub It was 11 o'clock p.m., the busiest time of the night. Finn sat on the sofa and poured himself a glass of wine. Knox asked casually, where did you go? Finn did not answer and continued drinking. You went to find Monica. Finn still did not answer. Nonetheless, he drank differently than usual. Finn. Knox held his hand. Aren't you going to work tomorrow? Drinking so boldly was not Finn's style at all. I'm taking a break tomorrow, Finn said. Knox still wanted to say something. In the private room, Monica and Michael came back together. Michael walked toward Eden. Monica walked toward Finn. Where's Jeannie? Finn ignored Monica. He did not even look at her. Monica really wanted to smash the wine bottle in front of her on this man's head. Knox said, after fourth Master Swan and Ms. Sanders went out, Ms. Lawrence went out as well. She didn't come back. Monica was surprised. No, Monica quickly called Jean. At this moment, Jean was sitting in the car. She looked at the incoming call and picked it up. Monica, I'm leaving first. Why are you leaving? Where's fourth Master Swan? Jean glanced at the man next to her. He's sending me home. Monica, who was initially a little angry, instantly beamed with joy. She said, then you should go back earlier. You've worked so hard. You must rest well. Jean was a little speechless. The speed at which Monica's mood changed was too astonishing. Jean said, help me tell Finn that I'm sorry for coming in a hurry and leaving in a hurry without wishing him a happy birthday. Birthdays happen every year. It's not a big deal. Don't feel guilty. Go home happily with fourth master. Monica smiled brightly. Monica was a frank but not tactful person. She did not try to avoid suspicion when she called. In short, everyone could hear what she said. Knox turned to look at Finn. Monica's indifference toward Finn could be seen with the naked eye. Birthdays happen every year. It's not a big deal. Birthdays did come and go every year, but this was Finn's 30th birthday. At this moment, the door of the private room was pushed open by the waiter, and Melody entered. There was no emotion to be seen on her face. It was as if she had not experienced anything just now. 
she said to Michael, send me back. Michael put down his wine glass and stood up. Okay. I'll go with you guys, Eden quickly said as well. Michael nodded. The moment he nodded, he glanced at Monica. Monica's heart skipped a beat. Since she had promised to give Michael a chance, the relationship between the two of them had become a little more affectionate now. Michael said, I'll send Melody back first. Okay. If you stay for long, I'll come and pick you up later. There's no need for that, Monica flatly rejected. Michael still wanted to say something. Melody urged him impatiently, Michael, let's go. Michael smiled at Monica. He, Eden, and Melody left. Eden had his car, but at this moment, he chose to sit in Michael's car. Actually, Eden was able to appear at such an occasion today because Melody was in a bad mood and asked Michael to drink with him. Michael just happened to invite Edem, so the three of them came to the nightclub together and coincidentally met his fourth uncle and the rest. Melody naturally would not let go of such a good opportunity, so she went to his fourth uncle's private room with a thick skin. At this moment, it was obvious that Melody was in a bad mood. Eden took the initiative to ease the atmosphere. I don't even know why my fourth uncle would suddenly have a relationship with Jean. Everyone knows what kind of person Jean is. Not only was she too unruly a few years ago, but she was also chased out of the house by her father. At that time, she was a big joke in upper class society. Later on, when she went abroad, she had an illegitimate child and was extremely indecent. I don't even know what my fourth uncle is thinking. When Melody heard Eden's words, her mood became even worse. The words, worse than a broken shoe, kept echoing in her mind. Ever since she was young, when had she ever been insulted like this by others? Personally, I feel that my fourth uncle doesn't really like Jean. At most, Jean's looks aren't bad, so perhaps my fourth uncle was momentarily bewitched. Eden seemed to be nonchalant as he continued to speak. How can I make your fourth uncle break up with Jean? Melody suddenly spoke. Eden looked at her. Break up. I'm afraid my fourth uncle hasn't established a relationship with Jean yet. I don't care. I want to ask you now. How can I make your fourth uncle and Jean not be together? Melody's expression was very ugly. Eden thought for a moment and said, let Jean's reputation be ruined once again. Melody frowned. If Jean's reputation is ruined, given my fourth uncle's identity, he wouldn't want her anymore. More importantly, she's useless. My grandfather wouldn't let my fourth uncle marry Jean. What should we do? Melody was straightforward. Jean is now in the Lawrence Enterprise, trying to wash away her bad reputation in the business world. Our first step now is to drive Jean out of the Enterprise and stop her from doing that. After that, we'll do the rest. Isn't that very simple? Melody sneered. You're the great young master of the swans. Can't you do that? Why not? I just don't want to ruin my reputation because of Jean. It's not worth it. So, it's not convenient to go against her in public. Sometimes, things in the dark are more difficult to handle. If there's anything I can help you with, just say it. As long as you can get Jean out of Edward's sight. Okay. Eden quickly agreed, a sinister smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Jean is such an ungrateful woman. Did she really think that she could turn her life upside down just because she hooked up with my fourth uncle? I have ten thousand ways to make her suffer. Eden and Michael first sent Melody back to the Sanders residence before driving back. Michael said to Eden, the matter between Melody and your fourth uncle will depend on you. Leave it to me. Eden was confident. Michael nodded. This was also the reason he let Melody and Eden get to know each other. Oh right, your feelings for Monica can't be real, right? Eden suddenly asked. Dot Michael's hands that were holding the steering wheel tightened. That woman doesn't have many abilities. Other than being crazy, she won't help your career at all. 
Your future is bright now. Don't be held back by her, Eden reminded him seriously. Michael responded, it won't affect me. Didn't your parents reject Monica? Eden frowned. Even if your parents compromise, given your status, you should at least marry someone from the Sanders. You'd be showing Monica favor if you marry her. I know what I'm doing. Eden glanced at Michael and did not say anything more. He knew what kind of person Michael was. If Michael was not a career-minded person who had ambitions for his future, he would not have compromised to his parents' pressure to break up with Monica back then. Eden also did not believe that Michael would do anything for Monica. Michael would certainly be in power in the future. Eden, of course, wanted to cling to him. Chapter 86 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Finn and Monica's Relationship Exploded Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation After Jean, Michael, and the others left, Monica also felt that it was meaningless. She said disinterestedly, then I'll leave first. Aren't you going to celebrate Finn's birthday with him? We haven't even eaten the cake. Knox frowned. Aren't you going to accompany him? Besides, he doesn't want me to accompany him. Monica smiled and said to Finn, I thought your girl came to celebrate your birthday with you. Why did she leave early? Finn did not answer Monica. Monica often felt that she was wasting her time with Finn. She rolled her eyes, turned around, picked up her bag, and walked out. Monica just opened the door and walked out when she suddenly felt a pain in her wrist. She felt a gust of wind behind her, and then she was grabbed by someone. It was so painful that she was dragged away in the next second. Monica was wearing a pair of 10.cm high heels. Under brute force, she was forced to run and almost sprained her ankle several times. Finn, you son of a b asterisk tch, are you going crazy again? Let go of me. Finn shoved Monica into a special car at the entrance of King.T. As it was a high.class club, all the high.class cars at the entrance were used to send guests away for free. Finn gave the driver an address. The driver quickly drove to the destination. Monica, who was sitting in the back seat, fiercely shook off Finn's hand and rubbed her slender wrist, looking unhappy. Finn did not say anything. He just looked out of the window coldly. From the beginning to the end, Monica only saw the back of Finn's head. Monica was filled with anger. This scum has a fit from time to time. The car stopped at a residential area. Finn opened the car door and rudely dragged Monica out of the car. I can walk on my own. Let me go, F asterisk CK. Monica wanted to kill this scum. Which eye of hers was blind enough to fall for him back then? Which eye of hers thought that he was the most suitable husband as he was a gentle and modest young master? She was filled with regret. Back at home, Finn did not let go of her and slammed her against the wall at the entrance. Monica was so restrained that she could not move. She roared furiously, divorce. I want a divorce right now. HNG. Monica widened her eyes. She looked straight at Finn who approached her. Am I being possessed tonight, or is everyone possessed? She was forcefully kissed by two men in one night. How coquettish was she dressed tonight? Not to mention Michael, how could she make Finn, who had always looked down on her, kiss her uncontrollably? While she was daydreaming. Ah! Monica screamed. Finn bit her. Monica's eyes were red from the pain. Damn it, what a scum. He was born a scum. Did Michael kiss you like that? Finn asked Monica. He still pushed her against the wall and lowered his voice to ask her. It's none of your business. Monica had a bad temper. Do you know that you cheated in your marriage? I'm still F asterisk king abstinent in my marriage. What right do you have to say that I cheated? Have you satisfied me? It has been three years. Have I F asterisk king touched a finger of yours? Monica directed all her anger at Finn. 
I've had enough. I've suppressed myself to live with Finn all these years. I've had enough. Finn's cold expression seemed to be slightly moved at this moment. He asked, you care about that? I don't care anymore. Monica was very calm. It's just a formal marriage between us. What's there to care about? Monica, Finn called out to her. His voice seemed to be a little different from usual. Monica looked at him. She looked straight at him. Do you want to sleep with me? Finn suddenly asked her. Monica's head seemed to have been hit at that moment. She did not come back to her senses for a long time. Didn't you want to know what our relationship is? Finn stared at Monica and said slowly, I'll tell you after tonight. As soon as he finished, he moved toward her lips. Are you drunk? Monica's eyes moved slightly. Finn stopped close to her lips. No, didn't your lover satisfy you this time? Finn's expression changed slightly. Monica pushed Finn away. Finn looked at her. What relationship do we have? We live under the same roof and aren't even as good as friends, Monica said bluntly. Finn's throat moved slightly. Is this your answer? Michael and I have started over again, Monica said without hiding anything, starting from tonight. Finn looked at her coldly and smiled sarcastically. Finn, let's get a divorce. Monica looked at him. I'm serious this time. That after she finished, she did not wait for Finn's answer. In any case, she had decided that she would go back tomorrow and tell her parents about it. She turned around and was about to leave. Back then, you pursued me on a whim, right? Finn asked her. Monica pursed her lips. To be able to fall into the arms of another man in one night, I was indeed overestimating myself, Finn mocked himself. Finn, are you even a man? The flames that Monica swallowed suddenly rose again. Finn's eyes moved slightly. Was I crazy? I brought you breakfast so early in the morning. I've never woken up at 5 o'clock a.m. in my F asterisk king life. I waited for you to finish your night shift in the middle of the night. Southampton City's winter is so cold. Do you know that I had a fever for a week? Was I F asterisk king crazy? Taking the risk of being beaten to death by my father, I bought all the advertising spots in Southampton City on your birthday. I made you AF asterisk king cake myself and almost blew up the kitchen. I did it on AF asterisk king whim, didn't I, Finn, we're just breaking up. Do you have to put all the blame on me? Don't you think you're F asterisk king dirty? Monica was not the kind of person who would keep everything to herself. She would tell Finn everything she was unhappy with. Even at this moment, she was still brooding over it. She was still brooding over the fact that she went crazy back then and did so much to Finn. Now that she said it out loud, she felt disgusted to death. Forget it, do whatever you want. Anyway, this relationship is over for me. Monica did not want to fuss over it anymore. If she thought too much, she would kill herself. Have you heard my explanation? Monica frowned. Have you heard the explanation between me and Patsy? You don't know anything, so why did you kiss Michael? Finn's suppressed anger was completely released at this moment. It was as if everything from that year had been revealed in front of them. Everything that both parties had decided not to mention was laid bare. Explain. How? Monica sneered. Patsy was lying naked on your bed. Was that a misunderstanding? Even if it was, did I also F asterisk King misunderstand you for touching her body? Monica. Finn called out to her fiercely. I'm a doctor. Putting aside my identity as a man, I'm a F asterisk King doctor. Chapter 87 You are listening at NovelFull.audio You really fell in love with Michael. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation, I'm a doctor. Putting aside my identity as a man, I'm a F asterisk king doctor. Finn really roared. 
Monica stared at him with her mouth agape. Monica, are you really a blockhead? Can't you think more about it? Finn gnashed his teeth. Back then, he was angry. He was really angry that Monica did not ask anything and just assumed that he was cheating on her. Other than not trusting him and not loving him enough, what else could it mean? Who are you to be with another man without asking anything? Monica, what do you want me to think of you? What do you think I should think of you? Finn questioned. Monica bit her lip. Her eyes were a little red. But why was she at your place? Finn looked at her. Shouldn't one be in the hospital to see a doctor? Why was she at your house? Why was she on your bed? I haven't slept on that bed before. Why did you let another woman sleep on it? Monica calmed down, but she burst out again. Now, you're blaming me for not asking anything. Every woman would have thought that way when they're faced with something like that. It was because Monica loved him that she felt so terrible. It was because she felt so terrible that she lost all her rationality. Have you listened to my explanation? I waited for you. Monica roared. After I ran out of your house, I waited for you, but you didn't come after me. Even though she felt terrible at that time, she still decided to listen to his explanation. She still wanted to listen to his explanation. How can you be so sure that I didn't go look for you? Finn could not hide his anger. I waited for you in the garage for at least half an hour. Garage. Finn was stunned. Is there a problem? He went after her to the entrance of the residential area. Monica looked at Finn. It seemed like they had a misunderstanding. Actually, it did not matter anymore. The last straw that made her give up was Patsy. Monica cried like an idiot and waited in the garage. She told herself that Finn would definitely come to look for her, even if it meant breaking up. Nonetheless, what she received was a call from Patsy, and it was from Finn's phone. The words she said were still fresh in her mind. Don't pester Finn anymore. We grew up together in the orphanage. We've been privately engaged for a long time. Finn doesn't like you at all. It's only because your father funded his studies. He just wants to repay his debt. Finn said that once you've had enough fun, he'll be done repaying his debt and will be with me again. Finn would never know how cold and desperate Monica felt when she heard Patsy's words. She did not even know how she drove the car away and did not die in a car accident. Perhaps we did have a misunderstanding. Finn lowered his voice. Monica's tears welled up in her eyes, but she forced them back. I thought you didn't love me enough, but you thought I abandoned you, Finn said faintly. At the end of the day, in that relationship, even though Monica was the one who took the initiative, Finn was the one who felt insecure. There were so many outstanding men around Monica. Why would she fall in love with him, who was not handsome enough, had no money, and did not know how to please girls? In that place where the upper dot class society was the cream of the crop, his inferiority complex would make him lose his confidence. He would lose confidence that Monica truly loved him. Therefore, when Monica and Michael kissed in front of him, he gave up. It was very important for them to be of equal status. Finn might just be consumable for Monica. Once he was done being used, he would be thrown away. Let's start over, Finn said very seriously. He was very serious. Monica's heart did not waver. She just asked him calmly, what about Patsy? How do you plan to settle her down? She and I don't have the relationship you think we have. What exactly is your relationship? Finn was a little silent. Patsy has heart disease. Monica asked. Because she can't stand stimulations, you have to take care of her all the time. The plots in novels crossed her mind just like that. No. She's very healthy. Very healthy. Finn, don't you think your words are a little contradictory? If she's very healthy, why did she need to lie naked on your bed and let you examine her body? Give me some time to explain about Patsy. 
why should I give you time? Monica sneered. Trust me, Patsy and I are innocent. If you don't explain it clearly, how can I trust you? Monica, Finn called her gently. Monica's throat moved slightly. Can you trust me just this once? Finn's tone was begging. He was begging her not to make things difficult for him. Monica's heart was still aching. It was not that she did not believe him. In the past, they might not have gotten to know each other that year, but now that they had lived together for another three years, even though they did not have much interaction, she had a rough idea of what kind of man Finn was. At least he would not lie or play around with her feelings. Monica said, Okay, I trust you. Finn seemed to be smiling. At that moment, Monica even felt that his eyes, which had never changed for thousands of years, were filled with a smile. Despite that, her next sentence completely froze his smile. Monica said, Anyway, it doesn't matter to me anymore. That's your business, and in the future, your business has nothing to do with me. I'm together with Michael. Finn's body stiffened as if he had been petrified. Monica said, Finn, I'm not interested in digging into what happened in the past. For a long time, I didn't care who was right or wrong. If you hadn't mentioned it, I might have forgotten about it. As for now, Michael and I are back together. I just told you that we started again tonight, bnoel.m, so I said so much earlier, but it was actually useless. Yes, Monica answered him directly. Do you love that man very much? Finn's throat was trembling. I'm happier with him than I am with you. Monica did not have much time to be happy with Finn. It was so little that she could not even remember. Besides, she did not want to torture herself anymore. You really fell in love with Michael, Finn said in a low and deep voice. There was not any emotion in her voice. Yes. Monica nodded. Finn nodded silently as well. It was his 30th birthday present, yet it came so unexpectedly. Finn turned around and went back to his room. He suddenly stopped walking and said, let's pretend that what happened tonight didn't happen. Okay. Monica even smiled at that moment. I'll still treat you as a friend in the future. Even though you have a bad personality. You're my father's attending physician, so I don't dare to offend you. Finn did not say another word. He closed the door. The moment he closed the door, Monica. Burst into tears instead. Chapter 88 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I still prefer you to take the initiative, M. Lawrence Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Finn closed the door. He leaned against the door. His eyes were red. I'm happier with him than I am with you, his mind was filled with those words. Finn endured it, his throat rising and falling. He looked at the cake in the room. Finn had prepared it in advance. He knew very well that Monica would not celebrate his birthday again, so he prepared one for himself, hoping that tonight. He would spend it with her. Alone. Then, he would confirm their relationship. After Finn pushed her away that night, he regretted it. It was because of his pride. He had been brooding over how much he loved her but how she let him go whenever she wanted. Now, she had really let him go. Whether it was in the past or now. It was too easy to miss a relationship. Under the same night sky, Edward sent Jean back. The car stopped halfway. Edward opened the car door and pulled Jean out of the car. Jean was a little unhappy. What's wrong with Fourth Master Swan again? Edward held Jean's hand and walked into a family restaurant. The restaurant's environment was very good. It was beside Southampton City's riverside. The private rooms by the river could enjoy the beautiful night view of the river. Ms. Lawrence, do you have anything special that you like to eat? Edward asked Jean casually while holding the menu. No, Jean thought, can I say that I only want to go home now? Then serve your signature dishes. Okay. The waiter left respectfully. 
Jean looked at the night view outside the French window. It had been some time since she returned to Southampton City, but she had never looked at this city so seriously before. Perhaps this city was no longer where she belonged, which was why she was not in the mood to enjoy it. At this moment, as she was facing Fourth Master Swan's awkwardness alone, she could only look out the window. Fortunately, Fourth Master Swan was not a person who liked to be lively. Jean was quiet, but Edward was even quieter than she was. It was until the fragrant dishes were served. When Jean smelled the fragrance of the dishes, she seemed to remember that she was so busy that she did not even eat dinner tonight. She picked up her cutleries and started eating silently. Fourth Master Swan ate very little. He barely touched the food. Jean ate some and was a little surprised. Fourth Master, aren't you going to eat? I'm not hungry. If you're not hungry, why did you order so much? Why did you suddenly want to have supper? Jean's heart suddenly froze. At that moment, she seemed to have discovered something. She pursed her lips lightly and did not say anything else. She continued to eat dinner silently. Edward looked at her, and the corners of his lips curled up. He could tell that she had suddenly fallen silent. Even so, he did not say anything either. After dinner, Edward continued to send Jean back. The car stopped at the Lawrence family's courtyard. Jean got out of the car. Edward also got out of the car. Thank you, Jean said politely. I don't accept verbal thanks, Edward said straightforwardly. Jean looked straight at him. Edward suddenly approached. Jean's body froze. At that moment, for some strange reason, she did not retreat. She saw Fourth Master Swan bend over and move his face close to hers. Her emotions fluctuated, and her eyes flickered. The moment Fourth Master Swan was close to her lips, she chose to close her eyes. Jean closed her eyes, but nothing that she intended happened. She opened her eyes. Jean saw the smile on Fourth Master Swan's lips. He said, I still prefer you to take the initiative, Ms. Lawrence. After saying that, he stood up straight. Jean gritted her teeth. This lunatic. Jean said, Thank you for the trouble, Fourth Master. Goodbye. It would be best if they did not meet again. She turned around and left immediately. It was useless to talk to a lunatic. It was just that. Since when did her heart beat faster when she was facing that man? Edward looked at Jean until her figure completely disappeared from his sight. Only then did he turn around and return to the car. He took out his phone and dialed. Knox. Fourth Master Swan, you're done so quickly. The person teased. Edward ignored him and asked bluntly, have you left yet? I just left. Where's Finn? He left too. He dragged Monica and left. I'm guessing that tonight, they'll either fight for 300 rounds or go straight to the Civil Affairs Bureau to get a divorce tomorrow. Knox knew what was going on. Monica and Finn obviously had a lot of misunderstandings. If they resolved the misunderstandings, they would get back together. If they could not resolve the misunderstanding, they would go their separate ways. There were only two options. Okay, I got it, Edward responded. If there's nothing else, I'll hang up now. Are you busy? I brought a chick home. Knox did not try to hide it. Edward directly hung up the phone. Knox looked at the screen speechlessly. He has never experienced the joy of life, so he doesn't know how intoxicating my life is. Young Master Winter, is the person who called you the legendary fourth Master Swan. The chick next to him asked sweetly. Girl, don't even think about fourth Master Swan. You can't hook up with him unless you're the reincarnation of a fairy. Young Master Winter, you love to joke. I only like you. What I'm curious about is whether he's rumored to not be interested in women. Does he have a problem in that area? Or is he, gay? Shut your gossipy mouth, or I'll cut your tongue out. The chick quickly shut her mouth. 
At this moment, the car had arrived at Knox's high class apartment. The chick followed Knox out of the car. As soon as the two of them entered the elevator, Knox started to make his move on the chick. The chick was also very enthusiastic and instantly became unusually engrossed. They kissed from the elevator all the way to the apartment. Without turning on the lights, Knox hugged the chick and threw her onto the sofa. Then, he pressed her onto the sofa and tore at her clothes. Ah! The chick suddenly screamed. It was not a scream that came from lust, she was frightened by the scene in front of her. Knox was also startled by the chick's sudden scream. He turned his head and was almost scared to death. Both of them were so scared that their bodies trembled. Knox hurriedly got up from the chick's body and went to turn on the lights. After turning on the lights, he saw a woman with disheveled hair standing next to the sofa, looking straight at them. Why are you here? Knox's scalp went numb. For a second, he really thought that he had provoked a female ghost. It's the third year of high school this semester, so I'm quite busy with my homework. Your place is close to the school, so mom asked me to temporarily stay at your place. She said that she called you, the girl said. The girl still had baby fat on her face and wore a pair of typical student glasses. Her figure was also a little chubby. Knox seemed to have just remembered that he had received a phone call from his mother before he woke up this morning. She seemed to have said something, but he did not hear it clearly at that time. He took a deep breath. Shelley Carter, even if you want to stay with me for a period of time, you should at least not look at us. Oh, Shelley replied, I didn't see anything. You may continue. Then, she turned around and left. Knox looked at Shelley and was a little angry. The chick was also confused. She twisted her body and moved closer to Knox. Young Master Winter, who is she? My younger sister, Knox had not finished speaking when he was interrupted. Shelley, who was leaving, suddenly stopped. She turned around and said, We're not related by blood. Chapter 89 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Full of Schemes Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Shelley said that and went back to her room. Knox's chick hugged his arm and said coquettishly, Young Master Winter, does your sister, who isn't related to you by blood, have improper thoughts about you? I called you here to sleep with me, not for you to gossip. If you say one more word, the sex deal between us tonight will be over. The chick quickly shut up again. All the chicks at the nightclub knew that young Master Winter was generous and good in bed. They always hoped to be summoned by him and hoped to be summoned by him a few more times. How would they dare to offend him? The chick said with a smile, then let's start the sex business again. Knox glanced at the chick. After being made fun of by Shelley, he lost most of his interest. Thinking of the long night, he brought the chick back to his room. Dot at this moment, Shelley was lying on the bed in her room, listening to the moans coming from the next room. She got up and closed the bedroom window. The sounds instantly disappeared. Shelley lay back on the bed, unable to sleep. She remembered the first time she saw Knox. At that time, she was only eight years old, and it was her first time entering the winters. Shelley was the child bride of the winters. It was said that a half-dot immortal told Knox's fortune and said that he was born with a life in conflict and was prone to bloody disasters. The only way to alleviate the situation was to find a wife who was compatible with his life. He had to raise her by his side since she was young because they were afraid that Knox would die before she reached adulthood. According to Shelley's birth data, she was chosen by the half-dot immortal. Shelley was not an orphan. She was born in a relatively remote village that was poor and backward. The village took pride in having children, but the more one gave birth, the poorer one became. When Shelley's parents heard that a rich family had come to buy her, they happily sold her. After all, having one more child or losing one would not make a difference. Moreover, she was a girl. A girl was not favored when she was born. 
the local people said that they were money. Losing goods. Sooner or later, a girl would have to get married. In Shelley's case, she simply got married ahead of time. She did not blame her parents. Compared to the life of her original family, the Winters gave her a world of difference. Therefore, once she arrived at the Winters, she tried her best to cater to the Winters, hoping to stay forever. After so many years in the Winters, she studied seriously, followed their arrangements, and was obedient and sensible. Indeed, she catered to the Winters, young and old. The only person she did not cater to was Knox. Knox did not like her, and it seemed that he did not want to marry her. Shelley sighed lightly. She turned around and tried her best to fall asleep. The next day, at the Lawrence Enterprise. Jean sat in the meeting room, going through the proposal for the collaboration with MUK. After two hours of on-dot site modification of the proposal, Jean finally finalized it. She took the proposal and went to Alexander. The proposal involved costs and expenses, so she had to seek the approval of the person in charge of the company. At the same time, she also had to attend the board decision meeting. Once she left, one of the project team members, Kelly Waters, walked into Joshua's office. You got it. Joshua was a little excited. Kelly held a USB drive in her hand, but she did not take it out for a long time. Joshua frowned slightly. Kelly said with some fear, Deputy Director Lawrence, is this illegal? Illegal. I just want to know if Jean is working hard or not. I'm afraid that she'll ruin our family business. Team leader Lawrence is quite capable. Under her leadership, we changed three drafts of this proposal, and the final draft is the best I've seen after staying at the Lawrence Enterprise for so many years, Kelly said sincerely. That's why you should let me see it. You also know that Jean has always been against me. She won't let me learn how to make a good draft, so I can only work hard in secret. Joshua was a little impatient. All right, stop talking. Hurry up and give it to me. Kelly was still a little hesitant. Joshua stood up and went over directly. He took the USB from Kelly's hand. Kelly struggled for a while and then gave up. He said, don't worry. I won't mistreat you. Go out. Kelly gritted her teeth and walked out in the end. Joshua hurriedly plugged in the USB and opened the document. When he looked at the document, he was stunned. He had never thought that Jean only spent 10 days writing such a perfect proposal. From the cooperation between the two sides, to how they would operate online, to offline logistics distribution, to publicity, to marketing, to after dot sales. Jean even accurately calculated the budget for each transaction, and the profit value was also estimated. If Joshua had not seen it with his own eyes, he would not believe that it was written by Jean. It only took her ten days. Joshua could not have written it even if he had a year. He was jealous. He quickly called Eden. Eden. What's the matter? I've got the collaboration proposal between Jean and MUK. So fast. Eden was not praising Joshua's ability to do things, but that Jean's proposal would come out so quickly. Yes, I'll send it to you. Wait. Eden said, give me the USB flash drive. Don't leave any traces. I'll get someone to go and get it right away. Okay. Joshua nodded and said, Eden, I feel that Jean is really very strong. Eden did not agree. To him, no matter how strong Jean was, how strong could she be? He still did not regard her as anything. It was until Eden received Jean's collaboration proposal. There was a second where he started to doubt himself. In actuality, Eden had also written a draft proposal. Although the Swan Enterprise did not participate in the collaboration with MUK, in order to prevent Jean from developing in the business world, he had secretly found a company to help him compete with the Lawrence Enterprise. Once he got the collaboration, the profits would be split 50.50. This way, he could create his business without relying on the swans. 
No matter what, due to his fourth uncle's existence, Eden's status in the Swans had always been low. The Swans were still under the control of his fourth uncle. He did not want to yield to this, so he needed to make his achievements and let the Swans, especially his grandfather, look at him in a new light. However, at this moment, Eden looked at the proposal and felt as if he had been suddenly hammered. He held a breath in his heart and could not calm down. He did not believe that it was written by Jean. It was such a mature collaboration case. If one had not really struggled in the business world and was not familiar with the e-commerce industry, one would not have been able to write it. As for Eden's case, he had even found an international gunman to write it. In front of this proposal, the things that the gunman wrote were ridiculously low. Class. Eden suppressed his emotions and did not react for a long time. Fortunately, he was smart enough to have Joshua secretly monitor Jean. Why would he not use such a perfect collaboration case directly? Whoever used it first would be the winner. He picked up the phone and quickly dialed. Miss Sanders. Eden. Yes. Last night, you said that if there's anything I need, I can just let you know. You found a way to get rid of Jean already. I need a sum of money. Melody frowned slightly. A sum of money to get rid of Jean completely. Chapter 90 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. By all means, translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation on the phone, Melody said seriously, explain it clearly. I have a document in my hands right now. It's a proposal that Jean has prepared to discuss a collaboration with MUK. The proposal is very well written. It's not an exaggeration to say that it's very difficult for ordinary people to surpass it. Get to the main point. Melody was impatient as if she could not bear hearing any praise for Jean. The point is, I'll directly use this document of Jean's to discuss a collaboration with MUK, but I can't go as the Swan Enterprise. The Swan Enterprise currently has no plans to invest outside, so I found another company that I can control to discuss the collaboration. That said, this company has a weakness, which is its funds are limited. If I rashly use the loan of the Swanhaven, it'll easily arouse suspicion, Eden said, now, I choose to use Jean's plan, which means there'll be two identical plans. In this way, the way we can have the most direct and effective advantage is the price. So, I still need an additional investment. How much? This is a $3 billion collaboration case. It'll be safer to increase the investment by 5%. Currently, the amount of investment I can take out is only $2 billion. So, you're $1.1 billion short. Melody said straightforwardly. She did not like how Eden was beating around the bush. Yes. When do you need it? Right away. There was a moment of silence on the other side. The sooner, the better. Currently, it's a time match. Now, Jean is going to report to the Lawrence Enterprise's leaders. If they're fast, it can be settled in the morning, and the contract can be discussed in the afternoon. We have to hurry before that, Eden reminded. I'll call you in a while. Melody hung up the phone and dialed Michael's number. Michael picked up. Melody. Do you trust Eden? Melody asked immediately. In what way? Melody told Michael what Eden had said just now. Michael answered seriously, the swans have always been under fourth master swans control. Eden doesn't say it out loud, but he's always brooding over it. He always wants to prove himself. In addition, under the swans' education, he still has his own abilities. If you want someone to help you do things in the business world, he's the best candidate. This is just one of the reasons. Secondly, Eden has very strong self-esteem. Back then, Jean was abandoned by him. Now that Jean has returned to shine and even went against him everywhere, he won't tolerate it. Therefore, you're not the only person who wants to destroy Jean's reputation. Eden's desire in this aspect is also very strong. You mean that Eden is trustworthy, Melody said. 
In dealing with Jean, it's worth it, Michael gave a positive answer. Okay. Melody was about to hang up the phone. Melody, are you sure you want to deal with Jean like this? Why not? Melody's tone was not good. Are you worried about your old lover, Monica? That's not it. Michael directly cleared his name. I'm just worried that if this matter is not done well and if Jean gets hold of something, you are, after all, a princess of a country. I'm afraid that at that time, given your identity, it won't be easy for you to step down. Jean doesn't have the ability to do that. Taking a step back, even if such a day comes, my dad will still protect me. I won't hide it from you. The matter of me marrying Edward was arranged by my father. Previously, my dad asked Master Swan to discuss the marriage between me and Edward, but Master Swan rejected him. Since the Swans have a special status, my dad couldn't force it. He asked me to have a relationship with Edward on a personal level and not on a national level. So, my dad supports me in everything I do now. Since it's the leader's arrangement, I won't say anything more. Michael, we grew up together. I trust you nobody but you. If it weren't for the fact that your family has enough power in the government and the public, my father might have even arranged for me to marry you. Although we don't have that kind of affection for each other, no matter what, I still hope that you can develop better in the future. As for whether Monica will drag you down, you'd better think it through. Getting back together with Monica is not only my decision. It's also your dad's decision, Michael said straightforwardly. What? Melody was a little surprised. Don't worry about politics for the time being. Your current task is to marry fourth Master Swan. Don't think too much about anything else. Okay. Melody did not ask any more. It was useless to ask too much about politics. After hanging up the phone, Melody quickly transferred the money to the account designated by Eden. Eden made a simple modification to the collaboration case and personally handed it to his partner, Cameron Hall. He also emphasized some negotiation skills and contingency plans for unexpected accidents. Cameron had been in the business world for many years. He started from scratch and relied on luck to develop. At the moment, he had some small business dealings with the Swans. He had taken the initiative to fawn over Eden when he stepped into the business world. Eden was new to the business world and needed help. After a few encounters, he felt that Cameron had little tricks and was obedient, so he had been secretly interacting with him. Extensive preparation would eventually pay off. Now was finally the time for him, Eden, to show off his skills. The corners of his mouth curled up into a cold smile. What's the use of Jean's strong abilities? In the business world, one has to resort to all sorts of tricks. Jean spent an entire morning trying to convince all the board members. Without any changes, she had completely finalized the collaboration proposal. She returned to her office. Jean had not caught her breath when her phone suddenly rang. She glanced at the incoming call and picked it up. I'm very busy. Make it short. I found a helper for you. Kingsley was really concise. He'll go to Southampton City today and report to you tomorrow. Who is it? Jean put the phone to her ear and sorted out her proposal. It's Miles. Oh. Jean responded and asked, he's free. If you need me, I'm free too. Jean smiled. The moment she wanted to hang up the phone, she suddenly thought of something. By the way, the last time I asked you about fourth Master Swan and the third Princess of the Sanders, you still haven't answered me. I thought you had given up on being tangled with fourth Master Swan. Kingsley was very serious. I've disappointed you. I've gotten more involved in him. Kingsley was speechless. Melody is very active about her marriage with 4th Master Swan, and the royal family also supports it. To put it bluntly, your enemy is Melody or Warren Sanders. Warren was the head of Harkin and was also the highest ruler of Harkin. Harkin had a hereditary system. 
Warren was the second leader of the Sanders, succeeding his father's position. His father seized power from the previous emperor of the Duncans. Zachary of the Swans was originally the defense minister of the Duncans who held military power. At that time, during the internal war, he defected to Warren and helped the Sanders take over. Then, Zachary returned the military power and resigned from his position to live in seclusion. It was rumored that Zachary was guilty toward his former leader, so he chose to abandon politics and enter the business world. Regardless of whether the rumors were true or not, in the end, Zachary was still the founding hero of the Sanders. Therefore, the Sanders always treated the Swans with respect. Due to that, even if the Sanders took the initiative to have a marriage agreement, if the Swans did not agree, the Sanders could only give up. If the Sanders still wanted to form a marriage alliance with the Swans, the only way left was to let Melody and Fourth Master Swan fall in love themselves. After one big round, Jean roughly understood everything.